Hi everyone, my name is Anthony Fontana. I'm an IRS enrolled agent with EA Tax Resolutions. And today I'm gonna to be going over what the IRS calls the offer and compromise and the formula that the IRS uses to see if you qualify to settle your back taxes. So if you've ever thought about selling your back taxes for less than the amount you owe, you're definitely gonna to wanna to check out this video. The Offer and Compromise is a program the IRS offers to taxpayers to settle their tax for less than the amount that they owe. Now you're probably thinking right away, yeah right, the IRS actually settles with you. Sounds too good to be true. And I understand, it does. However, you gotta keep in mind this is a legitimate option for certain qualified taxpayers. And the reason being is that the IRS has a statute of limitations to collect on your debt. And if they don't collect, on your debt by that statute of limitations date, then they no longer by law can come after you for that tax. So if we can show that you can't pay the debt before the debt comes due, then the IRS is gonna settle with you. Now the first step you have to do to see if you qualify for the offer and compromise is make sure you filed all your missing tax returns. And that's for two reasons. As mentioned before, the IRS has a collection statute expiration date. And generally speaking, this is 10 years from the date the tax debt was assessed. And the assessment happens when you file the return. So if you've never filed a return, the 10 years has never started and the IRS has an unlimited time to collect on you. So number one, we have to file those missing returns to start that 10 years of collection statute expiration date. The number two reason we have to, to file those missing returns is we gotta know if you owe any tax on those tax returns. And if so, we're gonna need to know those figures. The second step to qualify for the offer and compromise is to make sure that you're paying the accurate amount of taxes moving forward from here on out. Now you may owe uh, some money with back taxes and we're gonna try and settle with the IRS for those, but the thing is, is they will not accept this settlement if you're continuing this bleeding of owing taxes. So we have to make sure we're paying the correct amount of taxes from today moving forward. And there's two ways to go about doing this. If you're an employee, you adjust your withholdings to make sure you're paying the correct amount of tax in each paycheck so at the end of the year you don't owe. Now if you don't know what you should be adjusting your withholdings to, I will include a link in the description below to a withholding calculator so you can figure that out for your particular situation. Now if you're self-employed, the way we do this is by paying our estimated quarterly tax payments. Now if you don't know how much you should be paying in these quarterly payments. I've done a previous video before, which I will include a link in the description below on how to figure how much you should be paying. The next step we have to see if you qualify for the offer and compromise is to see how much you own in assets. And the reason being is that if you own more in assets than what you owe to the IRS, the IRS is simply not going to settle with you. And the reason being is the IRS is gonna say, why are we gonna settle with you if you could just liquidate your assets to pay us off? Now it's not as simple as just, you know, uh, oh, I own 10,000 in assets, you know, is that gonna be able to pay off my tax debt or not? And the reason being is the IRS has its own calculation on how to value your assets. And that's what we're gonna go over right now, the asset valuation. Um, so for bank accounts, we get a thousand dollar exemption. So it's total amount in your bank accounts minus a thousand dollars. Um, that's part of your asset valuation for the offer and compromise. Uh, the next one is, you know, if you own a home, it's the current value of the home multiplied by 80% and then you minus the mortgage that's outstanding on the home and now that's part of this out asset valuation calculation. The next here is the, if you own cars, you would get the current uh, value of the car minus a loan if you still have a loan on the car and then you get to minus uh, 3450, and now that's part of your assets here for this calculation. Um, and the last one I have here is a combination of a few. We have retirement accounts, uh, this would be stock and bonds in like a brokerage account, and or the cash value of a life insurance policy if you have one of those. You would add all of those up, and then you, get, you minus the cost to liquidate those accounts, not, which doesn't include the tax that you would have to pay, on your current taxes for the income generated here, uh, but the cost to liquidate those accounts, 
and then that would be part of your assets. Now you're going to add all those up together. And again, just for reiteration here, if that totals more than what you owe to the IRS, they are not going to settle with you. But if it is less than what you owe, we would then go on to the next step here, and that's the income test. All right, so here's the income test, um, or what we call the disposable income calculation uh, for the IRS. Now what you're gonna do is get your monthly income from your either your wages or your uh, net profit from your business, um, and that would be like an average for the year for one month. Um, and then you're gonna get your expenses, right? We have food and clothing, housing, car payments and or transportation. These, as we see all in red here, have IRS standards, which um, are published online, depending upon which county you live in in the United States, you get a standard um, expense for the month for those, and we just use those. Um, and as far as the next ones, we have current taxes being paid to both the state and the Fed. You include those if we are business. We're gonna do like the quarterly, tax payment that you're making divided by three so we can get that monthly expense. You know, if you have a daycare expense, the monthly expense there. Out of pocket for medical expenses, they do have a standard for this as well, um, which we wanna look that up. You know, I'll, I'll include a link in the description below um, for the IRS's website that shows these standards for each of these and you know, what county you live in it depends upon how much you get to deduct there. Uh, alimony payments, court order payments, percent of state payments planned for back taxes. So if you have like an installment agreement with the state for your back taxes, we include that here too. And uh, what you're paying monthly for student loan. We get the income minus all these expenses and that's what we call the IRS disposable income. Okay, so here are two of the payment options you have with the offer and compromise. It's either the lump sum cash or the periodic payment offer. Um, the lump sum cash is the more popular of the two because of the fact that we can get a lower offer amount with that. Um, we have the 12 multiplier to the disposable income here, whereas a periodic payment has a 24 multiplier to the disposable income that we saw in the last uh, slide. Um, so obviously it's gonna be a, a smaller offer with this, but there, there is a difference. And the key difference is here, the lump sum, you gotta put 20% down when you submit the offer. Um, whereas a periodic payment, you are, either paying anywhere from six months to 24 months the, the settlement that you are offering and the first payment has to go with the offer when you submit it and then every month in between you're going to have to make these payments. If you miss a payment with the periodic payment here uh, option, the offer is going to be revoked um, and they are not going to accept that. Whereas the lump sum, we just put the 20% down when we submit the offer, and then if and when the offer gets accepted, then you have to do five or fewer payments um, after you know, the offer gets accepted within five months for the balance of the offer. Um, okay, and now over here is just kind of some key topics you gotta just know when you do the offer and compromise. Number one, it costs $186 for the application fee with the IRS to submit this offer. We use the form 433A OIC and the IRS form 656, both of these here together, um, to file the offer and compromise. The 433A OIC is the financial statement. That's gonna have the asset valuation on there. It's also gonna have the income and expenses explained earlier. Um, if you're a business, you would use the 433B OIC. Um, those are just way less common. That's why we're not going over that here. And then the 656 is just going to be like a contract saying, you know, we're going to use the lump sum or the periodic payment. This is our offer. This is how we're going to pay those types of things. It's a little more basic there. Um, this is really where the, uh, the meat and potatoes are. A lien may be filed when you file an offer and compromise. So during the process that they are evaluating, you know, if they're going to accept this or not, a lien can be filed. Keep that in mind. Um, collection actions are going to be suspended while they process your offer and compromise though. So they will not come after your wages or your bank accounts during this process, which is good. Um, CSEDs will get extended. Um, so that's maybe not a good thing, you know, if you're not really a good candidate for this offer and compromise, that's something to keep in mind. You can't just like say, hey, you know, maybe they might accept it, maybe not. Um, there's no, con no, there are consequences and the, the CSED is, is one of those consequences and that will get extended um, for the period that they are processing this. Um, and that's because they can't come after you uh, for collection. So it, it kind of makes sense. 
Um, there is no requirement to pay an existing installment agreement during the time that they process the offer and compromise. So you don't actually have to make those payments if you're already on an installment agreement. Um, it takes anywhere from eight months to two years for the IRS to process these offer and compromise. So keep that in mind, it does take time. Um, if this offer gets accepted, you have to have five years after the offer gets accepted um, to keep compliant with the IRS. That means that you have to file timely tax returns and make timely payments of your tax if you owe at the end of the year. You can't miss a tax return or owe again. And if you do miss a tax payment or if you don't file a, a tax return within the next five years, the offer of compromise gets revoked um, and the settlement is no longer there. You then owe the original tax from the beginning. Uh, so it's very important that you stay on top of your taxes after you file the offer and compromise. Um, so the offer and compromise is a very complicated process here. It does work for some people, um, others it may not. If you decide to do this yourself, be sure to know that you know if you file the offer and compromise and it does get rejected, that the, uh, the IRS will not accept another offer and compromise with the same circumstances. The only way they will do it is if the circumstances, i.e. the income, expenses, the assets, if they vastly change. Um, so you gotta keep that in mind. So you know it is a good thing to hire a professional um, to do the offer and compromise as it is a sensitive contract here that you are you know, submitting to the IRS and there are consequences for this. There are little quirks that you know tax professionals know about this. Um, this is something our firm does here. Um, we provide this service. If you want to look on our website, eataxresolutions.com, we do have the prices there you know, for filing the missing returns along with filing this offer and compromise. I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you could like, share, subscribe to our channel, um, that'd be real helpful to us too. Thank you so much.